We're back for our Tech 2, our second game of the 2018 LVL Spring Term. My name is Vulcan, with me is Artek, your shoutcasters entering game 2 of TUP Monstrum Bell Prodigium versus Amy QC Clash Masters. Yes, and that's a bago nating format ngayon, Vulcan. Eh, kung napansin nyo guys, dalawang game total ang lalaro ng TUP back to back. So, Hopefully, marali niling sa rili lang. Kasi, siempre after your defeat against UST, you don't want to go into this next game right here. In, uh, let's see, maybe lower morale. Siempre dapat up pa rin. Kasi, kalaban nila, ating second runner up nitong previous term. Like you mentioned, AMA. AMA QC, Retaliate Esports was their previous name, and now it's been changed to Clash Masters. So, I think a short recap of what happened in our playoff stage with TUP and AMA's match. It was a really close match neck and neck in our previous term of the LBL, but sadly to say for AMA, QC, Retaliate, now known as Clash Masters, has lost with a potential reverse sweep at that. Yeah, but going into this match, I mean, na pag-usapan yun na yung UST and oh. TUP with what they've gone through heading into this term. Uh, a little bit of a background naman para tayo sa AMA kasi ang kinaganda ng AMA sila lang yung team na nag-maintain ng starting roster nila. All five members from previous term back in action para sa ating spring term. And it's something that sets apart. Actually not apart but mostly something we can see distinctively all throughout teams where UST, TUP has roster changes but AMA QC solid from the previous term now returning to the second term something to prove and at least retaining their original roster does have some benefits i would say oh yeah actually agree with you there broken because the roster ng ama i got a lot of potential and then heading into this term i'm hoping that potential because you can't just rely on that potential alone. you have to kind of shape it exactly that's the word i'm looking for mold it let it grow as qc clash masters will be sticking Stage here at match two as for TUP. I think when Chisto and I talked about the questions that we were asking for TUP, Asidia and Sa exiting the LBL for now, it's quite unfortunate, but it was one of the players that stood out for Monstrum Velpodigium when we came to the finals of the LBL. Not just the finals, oh, yeah. but also the semi finals. Yeah, and I think you, even though Nawala si Asidia and si Sa, you have to give kudos but into these three players that remain because they have shown growth from the previous term in all fairness. It's just that whether it's not enough to kind of fill in the gaping hole that Asidia and Za left behind amidst uh, their departure from the TUP roster is yet to be seen. But in all fairness, uh, I think um, yung na maintain from because sub, yung sub nila from previous term, oh. siya naman yung na upgrade onto the main roster. So I think with time, might not happen within the first few weeks. But feeling ko with the experience that he gets now that he's fielded into the LBL, eh, I think towards the end, TUP has the potential to find their group. Medyo kapakapa lang sa first few weeks. I mean, we talked about in the match ma match one how FPUIT was one of the teams that gradually improved throughout the yeah. group stages. So this is just the first week, uh, Summoners. So note that it's still in group stages. They have still have what it takes to scale up. Note that in the new format, once we move on to the playoff stage, I think it's going to be like a single elimination format as evident as we saw in the PGS way before. I mean, the oh, previous yeah. split of the PGS, I think that kind of reminds me of the PGS in a way. Top six moving on to the single elim single elimination type and then the top two waiting in the semifinals. Yeah, and I kind of like these adjustments because we have 10 teams in the LDL and it's much more adept talaga to really dodge players. Not. And sure, there's a 
uh, bigger rewards because mas marami mahapag proceed sa playoffs, but at the same time, you only have one shot per team, so you have to make it or break it every single game. I think the angle when you when we were going for this format change is to raise the level of competitive esports in the collegiate scene. Not just that, so that the teams will always be on edge. I mean, in the previous term, it's safe to say that you are at the sea, you're just waiting in the robes, I mean, you're good to go. But this is what we saw in the PGS where it changed, and I love how it's being integrated right now to the LBL to promote the growth of esports in the collegiate scene. Yeah, and with that growth, I mean, you mentioned it earlier, um, bigger stakes, not just in terms of yung dami ng teams natin, pero yung extra mula na pwede lang makuha in form of the prize money. Bigger prize for right now, 130,000. And I think napakalaking motivator talaga yun para sa mga players natin. Isipin mo, from semi-pro, being in collegiate, pwede kang manalo ng ganong kalaking pera. Well, the great motivator would be money, if you would say. But also the fact that the, for the glory, and the glory ah, yes. is money in my opinion <laughs> that's my take on it but akala mo sasabihin mo yung glory of being able to represent your school yun pala money pala that's not gonna feed me <laughs> that's not gonna feed me so once you talk about for the price well, it's something that's worth looking for a trophy cannot feed a family money is <laughs> just kidding Arctic. but I think you were talking about the roster shakers for QC being yes. maintained and your point was it's actually solid and I think we saw how the performance of AMA QC, QC retaliate now as Clash Masters performed really well yes. in the playoff stage in the previous I'm, term. I'm really hoping that they could take it into overdrive this coming summer term. Kasi, uh, spring term rather. Because summer term, parang ano yun eh. Para sa lahat ng teams, bagong LBL, medyo kapaka pa face. So, going into this term, there's no excuse now for the seven teams. Siguro yung bagong tatlong team, medyo may leeway pa. But for our seven teams, they already get the gist of the LBL. Oh, may onting changes, but... Metro, with the experience that they have, I think it's an edge now. Well, you could say that it's excuses if you would go for that angle. But when you're talking about the three new teams, it's more on putting them into the fire and let them see how they will handle the pressure and oh, handle yeah. the heat. And we'll see that later today for MCL and Bulsu, Bulsu's uh, debut match, welcoming match in the LBL. What a way to welcome them just for them to experience the heat in the LBL scene. Oh yeah, and hopefully with that entry into the LBL, and they start their LBL run with a bang. You know, their new upgrade, uh, I wouldn't necessarily, yeah, um, their new status as varsity teams. Because it's not just yung you can LBL, there's a whole road. Like um, all these different tests, I think we'll be able to discuss them in future streams. But yeah. definitely, I mean, it's the exciting fact that three new teams entering right now to the LBL is something that we should point out always because from ten, from rather from seven to ten, that's a huge jump. Oh and yeah, a new format change being shown is only adequate. It's mostly showing respect to the teams that this is what we feel like. It's going to promote your growth and promote esports in the collegiate team. But as for QC and TUP fighting for our second match, it's going to be a bit difficult for mm -hmm. them to go. So. so I think it's going to be a scenario where QC, a bit of a history that we had in the summer term. I mean, we saw the performance, we saw the potential. I think Arjun, you saw it too. We were there talking about QC, Italian, right. now Clash Masters, how they were playing against TUP. Sort of a close call for TUP in the oh. semifinals. And I think with that close call, um, we'll just have to see because I have a feeling that AMA is looking to have a better chance at winning this game against TUP just because, like we mentioned, TUP they've lost out on key players. Meanwhile, AMA sila sila pa rin eh. Tapos gaya nang sabi ko, since sila sila pa rin, andun din yung factor na mas maraming time na they um, up their synergy, up how they perform in game, their communication, how they work as a team in general. And I think um, we also forgot to mention that. The good thing about AMA, because you were able to bring up to our viewers na nabago na yung pangalan nila from Italy to Clash Masters, it's because meron na silang partner Cyber Cafe oh. right now. So all the more uh, resources to be able to prepare for this spring term. And may nakaka-scrim pa sila na sister team nila that competes in semi-pro. So ang laking bagay din nun. It just wow. means that they are able to up their game pala. And I think this will be a great step up in their prep for the LBL. And not to mention, shout outs to the Flashmasters, I would say, for AMA QC for providing the facilities. And not just that, 
this is what I liked about the first term of the elder, and now it's still being carried over to the second term. I mean, providing the representatives the proper guidance and support really made the first term memorable, and I love how it's being carried over to the second term. Oh yeah, definitely. And I guess we'll just have to see if all of that um, amounts to AMA performing way, way better heading into the spring term. But um, not just that. I, like you mentioned, sobrang kudos to Flash Masters for doing that. And I think it's something that for all entities out there, it's a great time to support esports talaga. I mean, we were able to announce massive changes in the professional scene. And nakita naman natin, lumaki pala yung prize pool sa, dito sa collegiate natin. So, just goes to show that the earlier on you get in on this, then like in the long term, mas maganda yung pwede mong ma-reap the rewards by establishing your entity, establishing your brand here in the industry. You know, something that I love about the fact that the collegiate esports scene, the prize pool getting uh, the upgrade, only it's only appropriate that it happens being a bigger team, a larger pool of players playing. And not just that, these this guys are students, aren't they? And they take the time to practice out their craft, their team. And if ever they do make it to the Champions and get that prize pool, the grand prize of 80,000 pesos, I think it can help them further and you know, help them with their studies too. I mean, money is always welcome. It's a welcome resource. You are a Vulcan when you win that kind of money, but your studies are going to win? No. <laughs> I would start up something else. But uh. that kind of reminds me of my <laughs> past where I did not did well in my school in my studies but at least when i see players like this it makes it gives me hope for myself oh. <laughs> it gives, it, when i look at the players i look at myself in the mirror i'm like wow why can't i be like that they are juggling the 11 uh, lvl and school at the same time and nota for Asidia and Za, one of the reasons why they are not playing lv is because now they're focusing on the studies trying to go for the graduate and i think this is the great side of something that you can see all throughout esports and something a practice of responsibility yeah and responsible I think gaming it's great that you bring that up because sobrang hang ako sa mga balating players ah kasi nababalansin nila yung pagiging magaling nila sa lol and at the same time kung titignan mo yung grades nila yung iba pa talagang way up there like achiever uh, in their own respective institutions Ooh, that actually reminds me of a player that really stood out for UPD Oblation Esports. Oh, yeah. Berserk. One of the champions of the uh, LCL going into the LICC, graduating from UPD, Obl UPD de la Man as Magna Cum Laude, yeah, if, Magna. I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. It's something that when I saw him, he should be one of the persons to be looking And I think the community really loves that guy. Exactly, but looks like. Shout out to him. Shout out to Berserk and to everybody out there na nababalanse. Because. Personal experience, but <laughs> so now let's go to the drafting phase for exactly. the second match of TP Monster and Vel Prodigy and playing on the blue side versus Amy QC Flash Masters on the red side. So, so far, looking at these bands right here, Zed as well as Yung Echo. So, again, it's just pretty much a carryover of Yung. What are the key strengths of Nieve that you saw in the summer term? I'm not sure if that will necessarily be the case going into this term because from what I hear, there are a lot of adjustments that they made. They're more flexible. They can only push the champions with their composition. But nonetheless, whoa! I think it's worth pointing out from our match one, we did see the Yasuo ban, but it yep. was actually a placeholder for the Kaiza. And now we're saying pick onto the Yasuo. It is a... Ties up pick. So we apologize for some confusion that can cause to our summoners yep. out there watching the LDL. So from Arctic and I, we do apologize for that. But note that it's a Kaiza pick on the blue side, a priority for TUP playing in patch 8.9. Interesting. So Kaiza in this case, I guess I'm interested in seeing how Navi is going to be able to utilize that particular champion. But so far, with what AMA has managed to draft, I mean, Swain as well as the Rek'Sai. So I think not only somewhat okay as of our recent meta, but at the same time, these are champions that I could definitely see, um, depending on where the Swain goes, of course. But for Zhao, I mean, this is just going to grant him all the more leeway to really get things going for AMA within the guiding first few minutes if he could get really successful games. And one thing that I liked about the ch certain change changes to the patch 8.9 is Nami is actually getting a bit more powerful right now compared to Ajana due to the fact that the Storm Shield grants 
less 80 at level 1. So, na Nami, in a way, the enchanter, enchanter supports are returning. Especially, Nami is one of the supports that we would normally see pick also. I think we saw this in our match 1, but now it's going to be the Wook God making his approach uh, to TUP's blue side. Man, you're going to be really happy about this game book. And well, first, a backstory on why I get excited is because one of my favorite champions is one of my favorite cheese is the Dust Blade build on the Wook oh, I see. But I think this guy would be going towards the uh, jungle side. Yeah, the safer, sensible, sensible side. <laughs> but uh, interesting. But I don't think that's going to happen because Jarvan has been picked. Yeah. Aww. So it's going to be difficult. So we'll see once we load up to our match two. But before we go to the rest, we'll see a bit of a summary of our drafts. Yeah. So I guess with everything that has been drafted, I think pretty much to standard there. But Interesting enough, Niebe going to be going for the Fizz. So this is another one of the champions Ooh. that he has shown to be proficient. Like I mentioned, any champion that is kind of gutsy going in to make sure to get that kill, that's definitely something that you could trust Niebe to perform at. So I am wondering though, because at the same time from TUP, I'm still having flashbacks of what happened during Game 1. Sure, they were able to perform okay, but I mean, it's still not the same... TUP that you know, like right off the bat, boom, just performs almost every single game. But then again, like I mentioned, major break-in period pa sa Hanira because of losing Asidia in Za. Mm. So but I don't think it's a loss. It's only a loss when you view it as such because every negative we see branches out to a positive itself. You can always make something bad into good things. And I think the good thing that we can see from TUP is strengthening their remaining roster what they have lacked what they have relied on can now they can they step it up can they now fit the shoes that's been left and further promote their school and give glory and pride to their alma mater man that's gonna be tricky 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 but i look forward to seeing that bounce back if ever they're able to do just that so ladies and gents run down the lock in from both sides both monster well prodigium as well as uh, once again that's clash master so let us know who you guys are rooting for who has a better comp or who you think you can execute hashtag tup win or hashtag ama win so it will be swain in the top lane and fizz in the mid lane as arctic center fizz pick and rexai being picked in the jungle for uh, ama clash masters mm -hmm. so now already we're seeing some approach TUP. I think this is something that I saw in the season one, or uh, rather the term, the previous term of the LBL, where TUP, they ramp it up. Yep. They As the game progresses, they improve, and they know what to improve on entering a next match. And we did see this, and as the weeks go by after the group stages, it'll be a best of five. So TUP can per obviously improve as the group stages go on, but for AME Clash Masters, they have something to uphold, to maintain. Uh, maintaining the same roster, you have expectations for this team. I'm really looking, one thing I'm really looking forward to here is Bomb on this Zoe, because the last time that we saw him um, play this more prominently was actually during the finals of the 2017 LVL summer term. And there were a lot of hits, a few misses when he performed on this champion, but given that it's been many, many uh, weeks. In fact, almost many months. Many patches ago. Uh, yeah, many patches ago since we've last seen Bam. Hopefully, he's managed to get some practice on, but ooh, looks like Zhao will go for something here. Yes, the fact that... I like how you brought up the Bam, Zoe. One of the picks that got us all excited in the mm -hmm. final stage of the LVL. But already... Ooh, what's this? Active jungle invade from Zhao. This is something that got Zo off guard and he may just go straight to the uh, bot lane. But he's a bit skeptical. He's waiting. Do they have the vision? Do they have the initiative to disengage? And what a dredge like connecting the hook, forcing out a heal and a flash from Ken Frost and also the heal from Relapse. Yeah, not necessarily transitioning to a kill, but two summoner spells, I'd take that trade any day. And yeah, going back to your point as to what you mentioned uh, earlier, Zet going for a gutsy invade by taking the blue of Zhao there. And I think the tricky part there is Zhao, he lingered for a little bit looking for an opportunity here in the mid lane. And as a result, um, probably if he was able to rotate within that duration, to do, he might have caught that. But then again, looks like Zhao actually man took a peek at whether or not the blue buff for uh, oh QP dear. was up. 
Dangerous here, forcing out his flash, burning that flash, removes his escape, entitles that knockup, and giving that sweet first blood to Falcata. Maki just getting taken down right there, even with expending the flash, unfortunately, was just within the comfort and within rage of oh Dao. Oh. Ignite damage over time being procced here. Will it be a kill happening? No, bam, with the safety from the CC and the sleepy bubble trouble. He will survive, but he's still staying in lane because he knows that the Ignite has been used. Meanwhile, in the blue side, we're seeing Marky using that teleport, immediately responding towards Zed's uh, contest in the blue side here, Bind connecting to stop their approach. Looks like AMA Clash Masters will disengage from the blue side, going back to the lane, and the bot lane looks a bit too interesting here as Navi! Oh my god, that was so close in that zone there. But thankfully, the Nautilus was there to try and stop them from pushing forward, and still, I don't think for TUP will suffer any more casualties. Come to think of it, Looking at Miko's uh, running a Nautilus, this is just so classic of the support of Technological University of the Philippines. Just going for these champions that just could just go straight in, try to go for those sets, and there you go, just like that. Oh my god, Ken Frost just immediately gets chunked down! What a damage! Going for the guy's side, oh, relapse! Flashed in to try and go for the attack onto now, but looks like Mika was too big and too fast as Nautilus. He was the one who took the hit and now relapsed. No more flash. This is a 2 0 in the bot lane. Yeah, it's a little bit too much of an overreach there for relapse, thinking that he could try to reach Navi, but only to realize that he wasn't gonna have enough range to get those auto attacks onto him. And he could have just easily backed away, but because of that greed. Su just suffered as a casualty and that ends in what could have been a zero uh, one for nothing to a two for nothing and it's no worth noting that for the kaiser it has been ba banned in the previous match and we know the changes and kaiser has been rising in popularity in the pro scene mm -hmm. and despite the nerves i still think that kaiser is pretty good going into the semi-pro league especially the lvl looks like a casualty for ama they got the first blood but in the end they lost two members in the bot lane giving a one and one and giving a boosting goal for Nav. Yeah, I'm wondering though, can Navi and Miko slowly build up on this to hopefully um, give TUP that leverage, that springboard to at least keep up with AMA Retaliate or not just keep up. If they could actually have a much more successful earlier game transitioning that into a victory, then I think the answer as to whether or not TUP can potentially still contend in the LVL despite losing both Za and Asidia is um, can pretty much be proven in this match. Yeah, I would really agree on that Arctic because we're seeing that for TUP, they're still trying to fill in the gaps here. But as far as we can see for Amico and Nav, going back from the fountain, they have immediately picked up their items, especially one thing that's scary, very scary, is the BF Sword Rush by the Kaisa. So I think you may expect the early upgrades to her towards her kit and for AMA they have to be careful. Slash Masters they need to decide when to fight and when to just relax mm -hmm. and not overcommit especially what happened with burning their heal and flash early on thanks to Zed. I think that was something that they have should have taken note of. Yeah and um, actually again it's ju we're just going back to these very classic habits that we've <laughs> seen from some of these players during the 2017 That's summer nice. term. Yeah sometimes it Definitely could be nice. I mean, with that aggression in the used in the right way, could make for a very devastating marksman. Just not for that particular case. Just earlier. not that moment. But <laughs> Arctic, this is something that gives life towards the game, life towards the players. It gives them an insight how they are, and I just love how much personality AMA Clashmaster has entering this match too. But for TUP, they are still, still, still focused here and not letting any opportunity pass, especially mm -hmm. Miko on that Nautilus to try and stop their approach. And now we're seeing we are going into the 8 minute mark. The second boss will be spawning soon and we're seeing for Baam. Dilly Dalling, tolling away towards the bot lane. Yeah, so let's go ahead and see if this will lead to success for TUP though. Oh, close call for the bubble there. They won't commit towards the dive. Four members, wow, immediately collapsing there. The first Drake is the Mountain, so they are taking their time. And for the focus in the bot top lane, then shifting towards the bot lane because they just changed their mind. Going for that dive! 
Ken Frost has been removed. Meanwhile, in the top lane, quite unfortunate and execute ultimate from Zoe will finish off Marky. Yeah, just basically a one-for-one -one trade across the map. Top lane for support. And I think at the end of the day, I'd probably say it's a okay. So it looks like Nyebe gonna manage to get Zet there as well. So two-for-one actually. Trying to go for the invade there, but for Nyebe, he did have his senses tingling. I mean, wait, Jarvan took away the first blue. He will do it again. Old yep. habits, as you said, Arctic, die hard. <laughs> and looking at things so far, I think what we're seeing here from TUP is what was kind of their game plan when I managed to interview them, Ooh. but I'm going to have to hold off there. Oh my god, look at the use of resources. Oh, the final tick of the Ignite will finish off Falcata. What a way to escape there. Is Flash available? Nope, this is pretty much dead locked by TUP's bot lane. And next focus is Ken Frost, the slowest there. For the Rift died, he'll just 40. Why not finishing touch? And they get another 2 0 sweep in the bot lane. Double kill going towards the Kaisa Nav. Man, Navi and Miko, I gotta say. Yeah. Well, I, I, like, I'm not sure, I'm. is it the motivation of needing to step up this turn? Because 3.02 on this Kai, so that is an insane start for TUP's bot lane. Meanwhile, for AMA, I actually find it surprising that Ken Frost and Relapse are playing way too behind in this game because if anything, one of my expectations from AMA, especially upon getting insight from them, is um, they really want to focus on being much more well-rounded as a team, but so far, not really translating, although towards the upper side, probably, but for the bot lane, I'm surprised that they're at this much of a deficit. Especially the fact that we're seeing the fact that the reason why the Kaiser was banned in the first match, and we're seeing the results of it. I mean, Kaiser rising again in popularity, pretty strong marksman here, getting a 3-0-2, immediately finishing up that Essence Reaver. Mm -hmm. This is going to be difficult for AMA Clash Masters to try and bounce back here because they not just lost uh, a two-sweep twice in a row, but has also lost the first turret. Yeah, but we'll s a little bit of a sloppy early start here for AMA. For TUP, even though it might seem that um, Maki is having a bit of a struggle towards the top side, uh, it doesn't really matter for TUP because at the end of the day, who are the people that you want to get things really going for their squad. Of course, you want to try to focus on Bomb and Navi, and this is something that they mentioned uh, they want to do as far as strategy goes. They want to trying to snowball or really get a spear head start for their key carries here who they know could reliably carry. And Maki and Zet, as far as expectation goes, just expect them to be more of that supplement to complement these carries. And I think we're seeing some uh, action here in the Mountain Drake pit. Arctic as the arrow will be blocked by Miko. The stun won't connect onto Zet. They're forcing a fight here. They're engaging in and locks him down. Locks so down with the Cataclysm. Are you kidding me? Teleport being called in here. We're going to be seeing Falcana joining in that fight as Nyeme and the members are going to respond towards the Cataclysm lockdown done by TUP. Yeah, a little bit of an abandoned moment. Let's go ahead and see how the clash goes. And there you go. And that's going to be flashes being burned here and there as we're seeing AMA from Clash Masters responding towards the Mountain Drake. They have successfully pushed that back, TUP. And now, what will happen to the Mountain Drake? It will go for a mini reset and they will not bounce back. Okay, they won't recommit to the fight, but looks like they're focusing on to the Zoe and Navi with the final hit from the W. Will re-engage onto Nyeb, it takes down the fist. And now AMA Clash Masters, they're scared. Should they commit to the fight? When relapse and Kenfros are really behind, forcing out a flash, kiting in and out, and the Kaiser will be there for that sweet cleanup. But for Relapse, it did take down Zed, thanks to the Mountain Drake. Man, oh man, somebody really upped their game when it comes to playing Zoe after that final performance we saw from Bam before. Not just Bam, Navi, he's absolutely on fire in this game. 504 on this Kaisa, and like you mentioned, there was a reason we didn't get to see Kaisa during game one of this LVL. Come game two, it's pretty much a Good demonstration here coming in from TP's bot lane as to why she's quite a proficiency with uh, being one of the more recent marksmen released for League of Legends. And this is something that AMA needs to find a solution to because TP all check marks as far as what they want to accomplish with their team heading into the LVL when it comes to their strategy. You gotta be careful here because as for the Kaisa, oh my god, 5 0 and 4, 94 CS. And as for AMA Clash Masters, they did a great job by trying to contest the Mountain Drake. They were happy, but I felt like Yebe was a bit too ambitious. And 
I think this is kind of showing our viewers out there that hey, old habits die hard. Words of the words of Arctic, and it's showing right now. And I think Arctic, you can totally relate to players. I mean, having <laughs> shaking up that bad habit. Yeah, it it takes a lot of work sometimes. It takes the a lot of patience too. Take a, a hell lot of patience, man. <laughs> you see pretty uh, of the flashbacks <laughs> happening for your experience, but I think. This nightmares. is something <laughs> night, nightmares, if you would say. But for Clash Masters, I don't think it's something that we should dwell on that much. But I'm pretty optimistic mm -hmm. that they can battle because this oh yeah, is definitely. a retaining roster. And okay, so there it looks like TUP going for convergence, but oh, mm -hmm. it's gonna be a fight. They're all running away from Zed. Lexi has the flu. As yeah, but hmm, like a questionable uh, engage there. He was thinking that he could have done something in the mid lane. But that's going to be him overcommitting again with the ultimate. And now for TUP, they are just capitalizing on those small mistakes. Yeah, Amy is looking quite shaky heading into their first game in the LV. I mean, we see quite a number of oversteps, which doesn't pay off. Mm -hmm. Like, it's more of these high risk, not necessarily the best rewards. High risk, no reward. <laughs> not necessarily no reward, but rewards that aren't quite worth the risks that they're taking. Definitely, that's very correct because the risk hit they were taking there was too much and it, the reward wasn't that great. Yeah. And now looks like we may see the Rift Herald being used for our first, uh, for our first time because on patch 8.9, as I saw, I think the Rift Herald's damage has been up. So mm -hmm. timing is everything for this Rift Herald as we're seeing falling to the hands of TUP. And you know what's interesting for me here is AMA. I'm, without a doubt, like from what I hear, if you're going to compare them to other teams, they were one of the teams that actually probably has some of the best preparation heading into this. Like I mentioned, able to do mandatory scrims, practices. But at the end of the day, I'm actually surprised that TUP, just whatever, like the fire suddenly lit after that defeat from UST. So I'm just wondering, is this just the day one jitters for AMA? Or is this indicative of hopefully not what we'd expect of their performance for the rest of the film. And the enemy has been focusing too much on Tomiko, trying to chuck him down here, forcing out that heal and disengaging from the fight with a Cataclysm for that long time for Kata, forced to flash away. And now for TUP, they're confident for the top lane from the bot lane. We're seeing all action across the map as TUP punishing AMA. Small mistakes as their small mistakes as they're overcommitting to a fight where they do not have the advantage in resource, in items, and looks like the Nautilus will connect that direction as Falcana has been ignited, ticking down. Will the heal be enough? Final take will not taking that as so is pushing back Navi and Miko will so low on health darkest session has been popped the bind will not connect Navi now flush in with the Kaiser what a sweet double that is going to monster bad for the year yeah they might have lost on a player but great job by Miko making sure to keep the members of aim at bay from taking down that key target which was Navi and really paid off for them they're just getting so much value play after play after play that they make AMA we see the attempts but it hasn't really led to anything fruitful. Sure, they're able to hold, it could have gone worse, but it's just that they really need to start looking for this avenues because TUP just looking so much better in this game so far. Let's check out this replay here. So as you can see, Zhao, he's actually very healthy and it was a good idea to try to go in because he could clearly deal with a lot of these low health targets from TUP. But then again, Zhao, upon taking down that Jarvan, immediately turns for Navi. But like I mentioned, Miko just did a great job at making sure that Zhao couldn't reach onto Navi because because if Miko didn't quite do his job there, then Navi could have gone down and probably Miko could have followed as well. So just great job coming in from the bot lane. Again, TUP's bot lane, very impressive in this game too. I like how Navi saw the opportunity. As soon as he popped the final tick of the ultimate, just fearless, flash in in front of the face, not fearing anything there. Again, looks like Yem is having a hard time landing those Chum of the Waters, looks like that's going to be the depth charge. Ooh, great eye frame to deny the open, and then in the end, to try and extend the range, so he will be surviving for now. Oh. Teleport has been used, but looks like it will just be cancelled out because they will not commit further towards the fight as we are approaching the 17 minute mark. Yes, so... With TUP right now, it looks like after going for that mid lane, gonna go for a convergence here in this top side. So the tricky part here is that, kumapapan sinyo, AMA, 
they're starting to hesitate as far as how far they can reach into their jungle just because of the threat of TUP taking down whoever kind of face checks. Yeah, <laughs> that has been juicy. That's satisfying right there. The advantage of Bam I'm going that Zoe. The amount of pressure that he did, but looks like the attention was all of him. As AMA Clash Masters just immediately removed him from the fight, but ignoring the Kaiser and Miko's front tanky line and also for the set for the lockdown with the cataclysm so that navi will have an easy time cleaning house my goodness can somebody stop navi in this game not even a single death on him just yet i feel like that's kind of the goal that you want to accomplish in this game if you can't really go for the victory Too good. but i don't know every like i mentioned this is tup playing to the strengths of their composition making sure that navi is very well protected if anybody from amy even attempts to go for him that's the purpose of having zed having maki having miko on these particular champions just so that they could gear to make sure that bomb and navi truly shines in this game let's check out this replay here so bomb landing that drowsy spell on to ken frost Ooh, there easily decimating him so this this is their key tricky part right here. AMA seeing the opportunity in trying to go for a bomb, but they weren't expecting that TUP would easily go for their response. Sure, they were able to take down that mid laner, but what happened after that, like I mentioned, everybody on TUP in that front line, making sure that Navi could just freely hit from that back line. And for AMA at the same time, um, a little bit disappointed that there was a bit of a tunnel as well on what was on the front line, not taking into account that Navi was hitting from the back. But overall, just another victory right there for TUP. Well, I gotta say for TUP, they know when to start a fight where they can lock down the key targets and then for the Kaisers to just go in and just clean house. We saw it in the red side. I hope for KAM Clash Masters it does not repeat because they have still some chances to bounce back because we have not yet reached the... We, also, we always talk in the caster that's the 10k gold lead. Yeah, and I think the tricky thing here for AMA is that if you're going to look at that fight, the key targets that you want to go for are indeed Baam and Navi. It's just that given the circumstance of where they're at as far as where they stand in this game, not to mention how few piece ahead, you, they kind of have to go for the lesser evil, the one that's much more feasible to go for, Baam. But amidst focusing Baam, they can't. Uh, they don't account for Navi, which is a little bit more trickier to get to Baam once he doesn't really have any escape tools as a Zoe. Mm. So it's definitely the much more feasible target. It's just that after that, they exert so much fire fire just to take down that one carry alone, who deals back deals quite the punch as far as damage goes. So tricky predicament AMA is in as far as where we're at in this game. And take note, we're only 20 minutes into this. 20 minutes only into the game, we're seeing the Infinity Edge, the Essence Reaver, and the Phantom Dancer for Kai. And I think it's a lot for TUP to, I mean, scale really fast because uh, 906 KDA is nothing to be laughed at. It's something to be feared when you're playing against TUP. But I think for Amy Clash Masters, they need to decide what their decision making here, what they have to go for. And they need to decide on one factor and one key element before making another mistake. Yes, it looks like TUP, they're starting to exert control over this Baron side. AMA, they want to try to go for a response here, but knows very well to oh. not overextend their boundaries. Speaking of... Okay. Looks like Bam trying to deny the engage, to timing at the right time as for TUP Monster Veil Pro the game. They are setting around the Baron slowly, but while Marky is just pushing down in the bot lane, it will go straight for the Baron. Whew. Looks like that will be the Baron take right there. AMA, I don't think they're in a position to potentially contest this. Looks like they're just focusing on trying to push out the mid lane. That's going to be Baron for TUP. And it looks like we might see a fight lingering in our mids, Vulcan. Okay, Ultimate is available. Ooh, close call for the second there for the Kai'Sai. Flash in and oh, looks like a flash in by the Wooker to set that four-man knockoff for Master Bell Bro. The GM just running it down, man. The flash was used. What a great knockoff to set up the clash. And for a follow-up by Navi with the Kaiser being legendary in this game. That's what I'm talking about coming in from Maki. I don't give a care in the world if you're going to keep on ganking me in that early game because I know what value I bring heading into these fights and that's exactly what I was expecting from the Wukong that Maki is bringing to the table. Just get a great set. Sure, he did go down, but just the rewards for the rest of the players who you want to shine, that's a check mark right there. And not to mention, it's something that Maki has been going for. Land that four-man knockout if the Whoa, hold that thought, bam, re-engaging the fight with the Zoe for a clean and for a 1 for 1 train in the top lane. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, they'll take down their first, second inhibitor turret. Okay, AMA looks like they have quite the work cut out for them. Although, luckily for them, inhibitors are still up, so that's still something that they can work with. But, oh my goodness, just... 
I keep on going back to this kill score. 25 to 9, not to mention we've already hit a point where it just goes beyond 10,000 gold as far as the visit goes. So yeah. Amy just... It's it's so tricky coming back from this. It's like they almost have to Very. need to capitalize heavily on a mistake that TUB could potentially make. Let's check out this replay though. So even though Miko wasn't able to get the connect, like I mentioned, I'm such a fan of this Wukong set coming in from the top laner of TUB. Just very well set up, like I mentioned. Sure, he did go down in this fight, but it doesn't matter. You just want to make sure that these key carries shine, and it's just continuous check mark as far as those win conditions being realized by Monster Ball Provision. And I just love how this it's going to be a point for TUP to try and close in the game. The Kaiza has been doing a great job by following up the engages from the Nautilus and from the Wukong. But now the final tick could be it as we're seeing for uh, for AMA. What they can do here is that I hope for the next game between FPU IT is that for the Clash Masters, they can try and learn something here as we are seeing BAM again sniping that Fizz. Yes, and it looks like... TUP, they're trying to get this turret in, just allowing that cannon minion to deal damage on that turret. AMA's base is really starting to open up now, unless they can do something. That Baron empowered minion wave is just making things all the more tricky. Oh dear. <laughs> this is big thing. This is a big thing for TUP. <laughs> they're trying to close in the game. Well, as AMA, they're fighting back here. Here comes the Tsunami to try and disengage from the fight, but looks like the Wukong again trapped inside the Cataclysm, and focusing on to Falcata, the Sway could not even get close to make use of that Dark Ascension and BAM will just clean it up, sniping one of the another for that triple. Could this be a quadra everyone? Looks like the Nautilus will re-engage with the Drench Knight, trapping down Yebe. Can he get the quadra? Can he get it? But it will be Navi getting that 11 kill, zero deaths, what a clean game from Navi. Oh man, and with that, ladies and gents, Relapse, the only person trying to defend, but it won't be enough. Technological University of the Philippines are going to take their game with all the motivation in the world. After that defeat, plus one right there. That's going well to be a 1.1 1 .1 loss for TUP Monster Vale for the game as we will conclude our match two. Yes. And Arctic, some insights on that game. What do you want to digest in that game? Well, again, it just goes back to how I love TUP whatever input I got from them during the interview as far as yung gusto nilang strategy pagpasok ng LVL capitalizing on BAM capitalizing on Navi kitang kita natin sa laro yun and Vulcan I just want to make this commitment right here we, I mean like diba there were still these moments where we still have that hangover that question mark Asidia and Za does it affect TUP I think at this time oh. I'm over it this is probably the last time I'm ever mentioning those two Handang handa na ako para sa bagong ira ng TUP right here. I really look forward to seeing how they'll perform as um, the term goes on. I'm ready for that next chapter to just unfold for them. Just really well played. Well said, Arctic. And I do agree with you. The new chapter for TUP Monster Vel 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 Game has been open here. But for Amy QC oh, Clash yeah. Masters, it's not yet over. Maybe it, they're still rusty coming back from the long break. But you gotta hand it to Q uh, TUP and UST. Despite their own, the same long break they have, they are mm -hmm. not dull, Justin. That just goes to show the fact that when they made it to the top two teams, they are carrying that title. And one of the things that I really like about that game was the, I think we can both agree here, the Wukong set. <laughs> I think <laughs> you were exactly. very excited that. That was that. beautiful. That's probably one of my, if we don't see any other interesting plays, that's probably one of my top five for the week. But um, for AMA University, I just want to say real quick, um, this game right here, in, I'm, in all honesty, I don't think it's reflective of what we should expect from them. Mm. Probably just the jitters. I'm a firm believer that this is just not their form. It's not the typical AMA University performance that we'd see. Maybe heading into their next games, we'll see them come out of their shell, but time will tell. Time will tell as AMA QC Clash Masters will resume their run in the first week as we will move on to our match three. AMA QC Clash Masters versus FEU IT. I time arouse after the short break and I think this is me Vulcan in Arctic signing up for now see you after the short break Knock up bro. Master of Bell I'm just running it down, man. The flash was just what a great knock up to set up the clash and for a follow up by Navi with the Kaiser being legendary in this game. That's what I'm talking about coming in from Maki. I don't give a care in the world if you're going to keep on ganking me in that early game because I know what value I bring heading into these fights and that's exactly what I was expecting from the Wukong that Maki is bringing to the team. Baron empowered minion wave is just making things all the more tricky. Oh dear. <laughs> this is a big thing. This is a big thing for TOT. 
trying to close in the game. Well, as uh, so Ayo's able to fight back here, he comes to Janame to try and disengage from the fight, but looks like they're going to get trapped inside the character. So focusing on Pupankata, the sway could not even get close to make use of that dark ascension. And bam, we're just cleaning out, sniping one after another for that triple. But this be a quadra, everyone. Looks like the Nautilus will re engage with the French side, jumping down near the Can he get the quadra? Can he get it? But Louis Navi getting that. 11 kill, zero death, what a clean game from Navi. Oh man, and with that, ladies and gents, we have the only person trying to defend, but it won't be enough. Technological University of the Philippines are going to take their game with all the motivation in the world after that defeat. Plus one right there.